The most famous Satan worshipping sorcerer in the world is Alistair Crowley. He is the person who wrote the so-called Gospel of Satan and founded the first church of Satan worship in the world. This person's life is strange, and the story of his death is even stranger. He wrote a book called The White Satan and called himself the Supreme Guardian of Satan or the Antichrist, and his number is 666. He reached the point of obsession until he founded a new religion, which he called it the religion of Telema. A BBC poll in 2002 described him as the true devil and the most evil human being in history. Alistair lived traveling from one country to another, searching for his physical self. It was said that he was a masochist who loved assaulting women and despite the passage of half a century since his death, he is still considered as the most influential charlatan of all time. He identified himself as the prophet charged with guiding humanity to the eye of Horus, which is the eye that we see in the Freemasonry pyramid. The death of Alistair Crowley in itself is suspicious. He died of an illness in 1947, and the strangest thing is that all the doctors dealt with him died, and the last doctor who dealt with him died after 24 hours of Alistair's death. But the thing that struck me most was the story of his journey to Egypt and Algeria. Many people don't know why he traveled to these two countries. What prompted this malicious magician to travel to Egypt and Algeria and what did he do there? Edward Alexander Crowley was born in 1875 to a conservative and very wealthy Christian family in Britain. Since his childhood, Alster was eccentric and was not popular among his peers and friends because he was always hitting them and causing problems, so they called him the Monster Crowley. It seemed that no one around him knew that this child's future would truly be a human monster with dead feelings. These aggressive actions caused his father to send him to a Christian boarding school for the purpose of learning strange discipline. But the opposite happened. When he entered this school, he developed hatred and malice towards religion and towards Christianity in particular. And he used to ridicule and ridicule its teachings in front of the people and in front of the monks. He mocked the teachings that stipulate the morality and the obligation to worship the Lord. One day, his father died from cancer of the tongue. His father had a lot of money and Crowley inherited a third of his father's fortune. He turned from a penniless teenager into a rich teenager overnight and became more free in his decisions. He took decisions to study psychological science and English literature at Cambridge University in 1895. Because of his hatred for the Christian religion and his knowledge that the first enemy of the cult to prayer is Satan, he decided to make a fateful shift in his life and this decision was to learn and study magic and sorcery and get closer to the other world, the world of Jinn and Demons. His ultimate goal was to become the first person to speak directly to the devil face to face. So he decided to go to one of the abandoned places owned by his father to apply what he had learned about the preparation and offering of sacrifices to the devil, such as homeless cats and dogs, and even performing dirty terrifying and frightening sexual rituals. Everything dirty and strange that you can imagine was done by Ulster. In 1898, Alistair decided to join one of the secret extremist groups. This group was banned in Britain and included a large number of witches, charlatans and satanists and was called the Order of the Monks of the Golden Dawn. This group was known to be a mixture of teachings taken from Isoretic Christianity, ancient pharaonic religions and also Renaissance manuscripts, which prompted Alistair Crowley to join it with the aim of applying what he had learned and so he did. After two years of joining the group, he was disappointed and decided to defect from them after he began to believe that they were a group of fools and foolish beginners who did not know anything about magic and he saw himself as better, more sophisticated and higher than them. Here, the idea of traveling around the world came to Alster's mind in order to satisfy his desire for knowledge and search in all civilizations for what is called ancient black magic. The journey began in the late of the 1909 with one of his students named Victor Neuburg. They headed towards Algeria, the capital, which was under the French occupation at that time and it was called the French Algeria. The stated purpose of the trip was to have fun. They started the trip first by tram and then on foot. Their goal was to arrive to the desert of North Africa, exactly to a mysterious area full of secrets. It is said that who goes inside it 
is lost, and who gets outside of it is crazy. This region was known for magic and sorcery, and the name of this region is Sefar. The city of Sefar, located in the desert of southern Algeria, is a mysterious city full of mysteries that have baffled historians, scientists, and researchers. No one knows exactly why the Algerian state doesn't talk about this issue and even prevents anyone from approaching that area and places military guard over it. The mystery of the city of Sefar and the mysterious inscriptions on its walls and rocks encouraged Alster Crowley to travel there and his first goal was to conduct a series of magical and satanic rituals and ceremonies and doing dirty things like urinating and defecating on the Bible and even reached the point of committing sodomy with his student who accompanied him. This scared and magical experience in the heart of the desert was a terrifying experience. His obsession with that region made Alistair Crowley say that the throne of the Satan is located in the Sefer region. It is said that the only person who entered it was Alistair Crowley and the team with him. What is frightening is that the information says that everyone who entered with him to Sefer either died or went missing. and. Only Alistair remained among them. He was the only person who made drawings and lines about this city. But none of the scientists or magicians were able to decipher this document that he left after his death and it's now located in a museum in Britain. From Algeria, Alistair Crowley headed to Egypt, the place where he would write his book that it would raise controversy in the world and even the place he considered his spiritual homeland. Alistair settled in Egypt and lived there for a long time, moving between thumbs, shrines, and pharaonic temples. He held many loud magical parties full of contraband, alcohol, drugs, and sex, whether with humans or even with animals. He approached his lord, the accurate devil. The strangest thing that has been observed about Alistair Crowley is his ability to integrate into any society he enters. He very easily after studying that society and the nature of the people he is surrounded by until he begins to behave like them. He seemed to be one of the people of the country and no one of the original people of the country could differentiate between them and him. And the most dangerous thing was that he had an amazing ability to persuade using hypnosis and suggestion. Based on his study of Egyptian society at that time, he was able to reach his conviction that much of the Egyptian society believe in myths, especially the pharaonic myths, such as the curse of pharaohs and the existence of the Egyptian god. For example, Alistair Crowley used to meet people, the common people, and tell them that the god Horus sent him personally to protect the tombs and the pharaonic temples. To protect them from whom? Of the thefts it suffered from the French and the British, and the god Horus sent him to protect their magical knowledge and hidden treasures. But the truth is that he was only deceiving them to gain access to the magical manuscripts and documents. He was deceiving them into allowing him access to the pharaonic temples and getting his hands on the secrets of the pharaoh's papyri and the manuscripts. While he was in Egypt, he wrote one of the most important books on the sciences of magic and sorcery. The title of this book is The Book of Law. In this book, Alistair Crowley collected all the principles and teachings of his new religion that he would announce to the world. He says that the book contains three chapters and each chapter took only one hour to write, and he claimed that whoever wrote it was a spirit or reincarnated entity named Evas. After he found all the magical treasures in Egypt and learned everything he needed, he decided to leave Egypt with his suppliers to a new place. Where will he go? To the island of Sicily to establish himself from there as a prophet of the modern age and to build a new religion. He founded this religion and called it Thelema. The most important principle of his new religion was to glorify Satan as the savior and the eternal truth and even to consider him as the god worthy of worship. However, the method of worship in this religion is different from other religions as it does not contain prayer, charity or doing good deeds. but. Rather good deeds and a way to get closer to God, supposedly, it's extremely filthy, evil and disgusting. One of the teachings of this religion is the absolute personal freedom of man without limit or restriction. And the slogan of the religion is do whatever you want in order to greatly increase the number of its followers and believers in its ideas and religion. On that island, Alistair Crowley held all the forbidden things you can imagine. He held 
the filthiest type of black parties and magical and satanic rituals there. He even offers sacrifices there and held prostitution and sodomy parties and things that I'm too disgusted to mention to you that are related to the toilet. Even at the matter of sacrifices, Aleister Crowley and his followers didn't stop at animal sacrifices but rather evolved into offering human sacrifices. He, along with his disciples and followers, focused on young children, especially infants, as they were slaughtered and their blood was drunk in frightening and terrifying ritual ceremonies. All in order to draw closer to the accurate devil. When news of disappearance of children reached the police, he felt danger and he decided to leave the place immediately. Here, he continued to writing and his satanic thoughts increased and even the followers of his new religion increased. Thanks to this fame, Alster was known among the people by many strange titles and names including the son of Satan, the servant of Satan, and the prophet of Satan. The strangest of all is that he gave his name a numerical name, consisting of three numbers, which is triple six. This slogan was always used by Alster in signing his speech, books, and even his incantations and rituals to conjure Satan, in addition to the five-pointed star, until it became a symbol of evil and vice in the world. Historically, this number is derived from the Christian religion, specifically from one of the biblical narratives in the Old Testament, which states that the number 666 will be written on the forehead of the beast that will be the enemy of Christ, which is called the Antichrist. That monster is actually the Satan himself, but Alster considered that his satanic talents qualified him to personally be the Antichrist, just as his beginning on this black road was his end in the year 1944. His path ended when he collided with a wall called death. Alistair Crowley was found dead among bottles of alcohol and drug packages and a handful of prostitutes sleeping around him. In some other accounts, it was stated that the real cause of his death was gonorrhea, which is a very famous disease caused by a large number of casual sexual relations, especially homosexual relations that may be sodomy or between animals. Alster didn't have any red lines in the slogan of his religion, do whatever you want. Alster has never been married, but the funny thing is that he has tons of children scattered around the world, all of whom are children of fleeting relationships, and they may be old now or may have passed away. After his death, his followers held a solemn funeral ceremony for him. During this ceremony, they burned his cursed body while reciting hymns and prayers in praise of Satan. Alistair Crowley ended and he went to his true God. But here on earth, he has followers remaining and people still embarrass his satanic religion. And in fact, his disciples number is in thousands. However, the difference is that his fun here on earth ended and his true journey full of action began. There, 